I'm Shuffle and welcome to my channel. Today we're back playing Choices. We are on chapter 6 of 16. We just left off trying to find a location for prom. And we were left with a threat made out of cut up letters from a magazine. Which like, who does that? So we're gonna go ahead and jump into chapter 6. Chapter 6, what goes around, I guess doesn't come around. Tuesday morning at school. You and Emma stare at the note from your locker. Surrender the crown or else. Kara and Max have seriously gone too far this time. I can't believe they'd threaten you like that. It's totally uncalled for. Emma, they can't scare me off. I have a bad feeling about this. Nah, they can't scare me. You're gonna regret that. I'm not giving up running for prom queen. Max and Kara will have to try a lot harder than a note. Emma looks more closely at the note. Are you positive Max and Kara would stoop to this? They've been so determined with prom king and queen, they'd do anything to get it. But there's one way to know for sure. Later that day at lunch, you and Emma head to the outside courtyard. Across the patio, you spot Max and Kara sitting with a few other her students. Come on, let's settle this. Like they're gonna tell the truth. You walk over to the table and overhear the last of Brian's story. She only turned me down because she was intimidated by my good looks. I'm sure it wasn't your giant inflated ego that sent her packing. I wouldn't go there, you pompous, self-righteous pizza. Will you just shut up? All you ever do is bicker. It's okay, babe. Ew. Tomorrow we'll eat lunch together, just the two of us. Then we won't have to worry about those two. Kara leans in to kiss Max and notices you and Emma standing by the table. You cross your arms. What do you two want? Explain this. You hold up the note for Max and Kara to read. Surrender the crown or else. Explain what? I've never seen this before. Stop lying. This has to be you. You've been trying to turn the whole school against me. Shelby has a point. No one wants prom king and queen as much as you two. Blame someone else. We didn't do it. If my boy Max says it wasn't him, it wasn't him. You don't have anything that says otherwise. I hate to admit it, but Brian's right. This note isn't proof. For all we know, you could have written the note to set us up as the bad guys. You think I wrote the note myself? I'd never do such a thing. No one would believe you. I would hope that that's true, but also they have a lot of influence over every single Hearst student. I'm just, I don't really know. I'm gonna say I'd never do such a thing? Why am I still wearing that dress? Shelby's way too nice to do that. That's exactly what she wants you to think. There's no way I'd write a note and stick it in my locker just to set you up. Max stands up and stares you down. Fight me. <gasps> Can I punch him? Are you sure about that? Positive. Then prove it. But the note proves nothing. Come back when you have some actual evidence. Just then the bell rings, students around you frantically pack up. Looks like your cue to leave. You hold Kara's smug gaze, then finally turn to walk to class. Let's go, Emma. We'll have our proof soon enough. Friday afternoon. You head to your locker with Caleb and Sydney after chemistry class. Oh, there we go. Let's get out of this because it's weird that I'm still wearing it. How are we supposed to remember every single element in order? So there's a song to help you memorize the periodic table. I learned it back in junior high. I definitely need a demonstration. Uh-oh, what did I get myself into? Caleb opens his mouth to start singing, but suddenly a voice from down the hall interrupts you. Sydney Kim. You turn toward the voice and see Mia pushing her way through the crowded hallway. Mia stops just in front of Sydney, hiding something behind her back. Sydney raises an eyebrow and points to herself, confused. Me? Yes, you. As far as I know, there's not another Sydney Kim at this school. What's going on? Mia reveals a pie from behind her. The phrase prom is woven into its latticed crust. Will you go to prom? But before Mia can finish the question, Sydney kisses her passionately. Like you even had to ask. By the way, the pie was a nice touch. Yeah, it looks delicious. I can't believe you got the lattice work to spell out prom so nicely. Trust me, it took a few attempts to get it just right. Sydney, so for dress colors, I was thinking... Mia puts her arm around Sydney's shoulders as they walk down the hall together. That was a cute prom proposal. I agree that was good, and I can't wait to see them rock prom together. But now I want pie. You know what? I want them to win prom queen and queen, if I'm honest. I can't wait to see them rock prom together. I have a feeling they'll be tearing up the dance floor. That's a given. You know their prom proposal reminds me of something. There's an annual farmer's market opening a few towns away this weekend. My grandma and I always went every year, then baked a pie together. That's so sweet, no pun intended. Caleb chuckles to himself. My grandma passed away last summer though, so I'm going by myself this year. I'm sorry to hear. Thanks, but I'm really fine. Although I'd love the company this weekend if you're up for it. I never knew you were such a farmer's market enthusiast. I wouldn't go as far as enthusiast, 
but they're a ton of fun. There's always lots of interesting stuff you can't find anywhere else. So how about it? Up for an adventure this weekend? Where is my boyfriend? I haven't seen him in two chapters. I want to go because the part I do in the series is to spend all of my money doing the events that maybe you guys haven't gotten to do playing these games so we could find out all of the experiences. I, I want to go because I want to know what's going to happen. Great. Get your grocery list ready for Saturday. I can't wait. Now come on. We'd better get to class. We better find my boyfriend. The next day at the farmer's market, you and Caleb stroll down the bustling street, enjoying the cool shade of boots packed with fresh produce. It's so lively here. Who knew we had a place like this just a few towns from home? Right? Just being here puts me in a good mood. Caleb leads you to a vegetable stand. The vendor smiles and waves from behind the cash register. Good morning! Caleb makes small talk with the vendor as you examine the vegetables for sale. They have purple broccoli here! I got that with my grandma last time. They're great with a bit of parmesan and bacon. Is this real? Should I write this down? Have you ever been to a farmer's market before? Actually, a bunch of times. No, never. Not in a long time. I've been a few times. I'm gonna say not in a long time. I've almost forgotten what it was like. You're in for a treat today. Come on, this way. The two of you continue to wander through the market, admiring the variety in produce. So you and your grandma made this an annual thing? Yeah, we did. She passed away last summer, a few months before sophomore year started. It's times like this when I really miss her. It must be tough. Like I said, it's okay. I've made peace with it. I won't lie, it's tough sometimes. But coming here and enjoying this with you is exactly what she would have wanted. Just don't... No funny business. I remember she always joked that when the time came, she'd be ready to smack the reaper with her slippers. She must have been a lot of fun. Definitely. There was never a dull moment with her around. The two of you browse through the stalls together, sampling fruits and sweets as you shop. One vendor calls out enthusiastically. Say, you look like you're up for some excitement. Have a free taste of Flavor Town on us. Who's this guy, Pierre? Wow, thanks. Don't mind if I do. Oh, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna do it. They didn't really give me an option to say no. No, Shelby, don't! But you take a bite before Caleb can stop you. What? It's not bad. You just ate a ghost pepper. It's one of the hottest chili peppers in the world. What? This thing isn't that bad at all. I bet I'm immune to... Suddenly, a searing burning sensation spreads through your mouth. Um... Yum? That worked? Caleb, why don't you try some? They're delicious. Then why are there tears streaming down your face? Those are tears of joy. Your brow is pouring with sweat from enduring the heat. A sudden burst of anger overcomes you. Why didn't you stop me from eating it? I tried! You didn't listen. You're right. I regret everything now. I'm dying. It's been nice knowing you, Caleb. Calm down. I'm sure no one's ever died from eating just one chili pepper. That vendor did the same thing to me once, and it didn't scar me for life. Caleb gets you a bottle of milk from a nearby stand. He's barely able to stifle a laugh as you down it all in one large gulp. Grimacing. Trust me, you're gonna look back on this someday and smile. Maybe you're right, but now let's keep going. I need to take my mind off the pain. As you head farther down the street, a jaunty melody fills your ears. Look over there! There's live music! A musician is performing in the shade of an electric keyboard. Around him, a small crowd has gathered to listen. You don't get that kind of entertainment at the supermarket. Caleb, let's dance! Clap to the beat. I don't want things to get too spicy here because I have a boyfriend. So I'm just gonna say we're just gonna start clapping. You and Caleb clap rhythmically in time with the music. The rest of the audience joins in. Beaming, the musician taps his feet and bobs his head to the beat. After a few minutes, the song concludes to a scattered applause. As you and Caleb continue walking, a stall brimming with exotic fruits and vegetables catches your eye. What is that over there? A guava? Science says it's a striped zebra tomato, apparently. You learn something new every day. Look, this crate is labeled fresh sour cherries. That's almost too honest. I mean, who'd want sour cherries? Actually, that's kind of perfect for pies. They taste really good after you've baked them. I've got it. We can continue the tradition and make our own cherry pie. Are we flirting? Was this a date? Where did my boyfriend go? Later at Caleb's house. The pie's ready to eat. Finally. Caleb cuts you a generous slice of cherry pie. You take a seat and Caleb plops down next to you with his own slice. This smells incredible. I'll scarf it down. Savor it. I'm gonna scarf it down. This is good. <laughs> Whoa there, don't forget to breathe. But you're right, so good. The sour cherries were perfect. You know, eating this really brings me back. I've been thinking, my grandma really lived life to the fullest and I've always wanted to do the same. So making new memories now, both good and bad, makes me really happy. I couldn't have asked for a better day. Me neither, thanks for taking me along. It was my pleasure. You wrap Caleb in a tight hug. He's solid and warm in your arms. 
You're a good hugger. I feel like my hugging skills need work now. You ain't practicing with me. I'm always here if you want to practice. You have a boyfriend. You and Caleb pull apart as Ezra pokes his head into the living room. Is that pie I smell? Yeah, Shelby and I baked some. Help yourself. Ezra cuts himself a slice and takes a big bite out of it. As he chews, he nods and gives you a thumb up. I approve. 10 out of 10. I'm glad Shelby came up with the idea to make it. Same. Thanks, Shelby. You're very welcome. The three of you spend the afternoon eating the rest of the pie and enjoying your time together. Monday after school, Julian and Coach Shaw address you and the rest of the baseball team. Okay, everyone. Get on the field and practice like it's a real game. Shelby, you're up to bat first. Let's see what you can do. You got it, Captain. Brian rolls his eyes and mutters under his breath. Suck up. There's no need for harsh words, Brian. Come on, team. Let's get on the field. You stand at home plate, staring Brian down. He pitches a fastball to you. <gasps> hit. Oh my god, I'm not messing this up. I'm a gamer. You hit the ball with a resounding clang. It goes flying into the outfield, and Jade runs after it. I got it. Great hit, Shelby. Now run. I'm gonna run? You run as fast as you can down the baseline. Almost there. Caleb steps off the base to catch Jade's throw. He turns back and tries to tag you out. Slide, Shelby! You need to avoid the tag! Slide? You slide into the dirt and touch the base. Caleb reaches down and tags your leg a second later. Everyone turns to Julian, acting as umpire. Safe! Nice job, Shelby. Those are the kind of skills we want to see in a cleanup hitter. Brian storms over to you and Julian. Shelby has the skills for cleanup hitter. What about Jade? She was way better than Shelby yesterday. Soon the entire baseball team crowds around you. Way to favor Barry again, Julian. I'm being a good captain, Max. Either of them could get the spot. All I want is a fair shot. Shut up, Jade. We've got this. Hey now, this is between me and Jade. We're wasting our time. The spot's mine. No, 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 no. I like Jade. And I want both of us to have a fair shot. This is between me and her. We'll figure out who'll be a cleanup hitter fair and square. This is about more than just the spot, though. It's about Hurst and their big heads. Must be so hard to walk around with that giant thing all the time. At least I have some actual talent. Hello, full ride scholarship. That's because they don't know you're a selfish, conceited grade A. That's it. Max and Julian grab each other's shirts. They glare at each other, seething. Stop fighting. Can't you do something, Shelby? Caleb? Stop talking to the enemy, Jade. This is for you. Jade, we can be friends. Max and Brian are your true enemies. I mean, they kind of mean the same thing. I kind of want to say we can be friends more than trying to pit her against her own classmates. I want to be, but Coach Shaw comes running from the dugout. Julie and Max, hands off each other. Like it or not, you're a team. Now act like it. Max shoves Julian off of him. Max whispers so low that only you and Julian hear him. Keep your bias in check, Julian, or else I'll get Coach Shaw to make me captain. Come on, Hurst, we're out. Brian, Jade, and the rest of the Hurst students follow Max back to the locker room. Why are we always fighting? Because Hurst and Barry are mortal enemies. Practice is over, everyone. Just go. On your walk home. You cut through the school parking lot thinking about practice. At least today's a nice day out. Suddenly you hear a loud roar as Michael's motorcycle pulls up behind you. He idles alongside you as you walk. Uh-oh, I've seen that look before. Where has he been? What look? I don't have a look. Hate to break it to you, but you do. You're wearing the it's been a crappy day look right now. Michael, is it that obvious? People are just so frustrating. What a perceptive boyfriend you are. I'm gonna say people are frustrating. I'm gonna see if he wants to listen to my problems. Last quarter it was because of Issa. This quarter it's because of Hurst. Why can't everyone just get along for once? Because high school would be too easy without drama? You know, I've found in times like these, motorcycle rides are the only cure in the world. The only one? Somehow I doubt that. Don't knock it till you try it, cause it works wonders. Michael nudges the back of his motorcycle. How about it, Shelby? We can go for a ride around town. I'll even throw in a tour of my secret spot. <gasps> oh, I'm so down. Remember when I was considering breaking up with him because I kind of just want to see what happens. If this is in the same world as the college series, I must have at some point because he was not one of my dating options at school. Michael hands you a spare helmet. You strap it on, then slide onto the back of his motorcycle. Lead the way. You'd better hold on. Michael revs his bike and the two of you zoom off. Soon, you and Michael ride through the town square. The passing shops are a blur as you drive by. I'm starting to see why you enjoy this. Right? It's pretty freeing. The wind whips against your face as you weave in and out of traffic. You take a deep breath and yell, I'm queen of the world! I don't know what that second one is. Best date ever. I would like to be queen of the world. Just as you yell, you pass <gasps> Max and Kara on the street. They glare at you and Michael as you drive by. Looks like someone disagrees. 
Michael lets out a hearty chuckle. For what it's worth, you've got my vote for prom queen. Michael takes a turn and guides you through the nearby park. You admire the view of the surrounding greenery. So Spill, what's got you down today? It's just, I'm tired of this rivalry. I mean, when we started tryouts, it was just Jade and I going for the cleanup hitter spot. Then Max and Brian butted in and everything escalated. Now it's this whole Barry versus Hearst thing again. I just want everyone to get along what I earned. It is unfair to both me and Jade because we both probably earned it at our respective schools, but we're having to be forced into this situation. I would want everyone to get along though. I hate how much everyone fights now. The rivalry, the rivalry was at least bearable when we were at different schools. If it's so bad, you could always quit. You glare at Michael. I don't have to look at you to know you're giving me the eye. In that case, here's my serious advice. Give it time, and I'm sure things will blow over. They always do. I mean, Hurst and Barry have hated each other since Barry High was founded. It'll take a lot to get everyone to come around. And you said the same thing about being quarterback, and that turned out pretty well. Exactly, just use whatever magic trick you used on me for these tryouts. You make it sound so easy, and you make it sound impossible. It's not. You look around at your surroundings whizzing by. How long until we're at this special spot of yours? We're almost there, in fact, Close your eyes so you're really blown away. You secure your hold around Michael's waist and shut your eyes. Just don't crash. Over the next few minutes, you feel the twists and turns of the road. Suddenly, the motorcycle comes to a stop. Okay, we're here. Ooh, where do we live? You open your eyes to see a vast green area surrounded by trees. To your left, you see a flowing river extending as far as the eye can see. Whoa, this is some place. Not just any place, but it's my really good thinking place. Michael hops off the bike and sits next to the river's edge. You join him and look at the rushing water in front of you. Remember when you found me at the park last fall? How could I forget? You were throwing rocks there and refused to be quarterback. Well, I came here afterward. It's a bit more secluded and even better for skipping stones than the park. Explains the wicked good throwing arm. Pretty much. This has been my place ever since. I came here after I joined the football team, after homecoming, and after you agreed to be my girlfriend. Michael, thanks for showing me this. I can't say this is what I imagined. Looks like the perfect place to make out. I'm gonna say thanks for showing me. This was his spot and now he's brought me into it and I'm going to steal it from him. You seemed like you needed it. Just don't tell anyone else. My lips are sealed. Michael glances down and picks up a small, smooth stone. He turns it over in his hand. You know, this is perfect for skipping. In fact, Michael stands up and throws the stone. You watch it hop across the water again and again until it finally comes to a stop and sinks. Think you can beat that? Michael hands you another smooth, flat stone and motions to the river. I've got this. I'm gonna skip. I actually cannot do this. I've never done this in my life before. You easily skip the rock down the river. It bounces across the water. That's further than yours. I win. Maybe you should be quarterback next fall. You search the river's edge for more stones as the two of you enjoy the rest of your afternoon away from town. That evening, you walk into the living room to find your dad watching The Last Lumberjack on TV. Just in time for the big fight scene? Who's fighting in lum what? You join your dad on the couch and watch the Chris Winters movie. As the film goes on, your phone buzzes. You pull it out and read the latest text from Emma. Good news. What's up? Tucker's Fam's restaurant is having open mic night Friday. Mom's taking me. Get your dad to go too, and then bam, we play Cupid. Yes, let's do it. You put your phone down and look over at your dad. He's quoting every line of the movie, word for word. Martha, don't you see what this means? I'm the last lumberjack. Hey dad, got any plans Friday night? Not that I know of, why? A mischievous grin creeps across your face. Well, you do now. We're going out. Next time on High School Story, it's time to play Cupid with your dad and Emma's mom. Will it be love at first bite? Wait, why bite? Why are they biting? Who's biting who? I'm pretty scared. I'm pretty scared of Max and Kara. I think they're gonna try and come and kill me, especially now that they heard me screaming through town that I wanna be queen after they left a spooky note with cut out letters from a magazine, which still like, who does that? But that's gonna be it for today's video. Leave a like if you enjoyed watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.